It's uh, six o'clock and I'm going to call the uh, ethics board meeting to order. I'm Alderman Jim Bourne of the fourth district, uh, temporary chair of the ethics board. Uh, Madam city clerk, would you please call the roll? Boren. Here. Bauk. Here. Gisha. Here. Here. Hannah. Here. Heideman. Here. Kittleson. Here. Kleunis. Uh, excused. Manny. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Ryan. Here. Smith. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Verhasselt. Excused. And Wangeman. Here. 14 present. Alderman Wangeman, would you lead us in the pledge, please? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Wangaman. Uh, we do need to mic up tonight, uh, as we do for a regular council meeting, because this is on, this is on TV8 tonight. Before we proceed with the agenda, I just wanted to make a couple comments. Uh, last night, at last Monday night's council meeting, uh, Alderman Gish's uh, resolution, council document number 1643, was referred, and I have to use that word referred because it's important to the, uh, to the, S to the ethics board. Uh, last Tuesday, I met with the city attorney, the city clerk, Alderman Hanna, as council president, was invited. I met with them last Tuesday, and uh, it was my intention to go forward with the ethics board investigation tonight. In fact, I had a, a, a agenda prepared. When I got to the meeting, I found out because of a technicality with uh, Alderman Gish's resolution that it would have been proper to have that resolution passed by the council and then sent on to the uh, sent on to the ethics board. Because of that, because of that oversight, we are somewhat limited as to what we can do tonight. But in my agenda that I had that I had prepared, I was prepared to take uh, testimony under oath from uh, Alderman uh, Ryan, Alderperson uh, Meyer, and also uh, Mayor Perez for any knowledge that he had with the incident that happened. Uh, on November 9th. With that being said, as I said, we can only uh, go ahead with what we're able to do tonight because of that oversight with the resolution. So we will now move forward with the agenda. And the first thing on the agenda is RO number 396-0708, council document number 1622, by the city clerk submitting a communication from Alderperson Bulk stating that as his, that as he is unable to attend tonight's council meeting, he wishes to lend his strongest personal support to the resolution that would convene the Common Council, Council's Ethics Board in order to investigate a threat to, to reveal uh, details of an elected official's personal life as a means to manip manipulate pol political behaviors or outcomes. And... Uh, Alderman Bauck. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd move that the RO be uh, accepted and placed on file. Thank you. Alderman Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I, I think I buzzed in first. And I would like to move to file all documents, 1, 2, 3, agenda items 1622, 1623, and 1643. Second. Wait. wait. Uh, point of order here. Um, point of order. We have a motion on the floor that has not been seconded by Alderman Bauck. Second. And that is to handle number one. Okay, we have a motion and a second to file uh, agenda item number one. Uh, any discussion? Uh, I don't think we need a roll call on this, do we? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Uh, agenda item number one is filed. Uh, Alderman Montemayor, did you want to continue? Yeah, yes, thank you, Chairman. I would then like to file agenda item number two, agenda item number three, for RO number 3970708 and resolution number 1520708. Second. Uh, Attorney McLean, point of order. Uh, should uh, Alderman Meyer 
Alderperson Meyer be seconding seconding this? Thank you. Uh, you know, this is an issue that deals with uh, whether or not an older person feels that they've got a conflict of interest or not. Uh, it's a personal decision. It's a personal uh, choice whether an older person abstains or not. Uh, I would point out, though, that the, the criteria basically are under the ethics code, the uh, conflict of interest, whether you, you've got personal or a financial interest in the matter. Uh, it would appear to me that Alder Person Meyer has a personal interest in the matter, uh, but that's, you know, I can give an advisory opinion. Uh, the aldermen have to do what they, uh, what they feel is appropriate for them. Uh, I guess I would advise Alder Person Meyer from abstaining and not taking part in the motion. Uh, but my my advice. Alderman Rinfleisch. Point of order. Um, we the motion that is made. I don't know if we have a second yet. Uh, that's re, re, uh, reversed her second, but is to file a document that we don't have on the agenda. She mentioned the, the number two, number three, and then the, um, the fourth one. She mentioned in her motion. Can you repeat the motion? Uh, thank you. RO number 3970708, agenda item number on our number two on tonight, and resolution number 1520708, agenda item number three on our agenda tonight. Just those? Yes. Thank you. Well, it appears that the motion dies for a lack of second. Moving on to agenda item number two, RO number 3970708, council document number 1623, by the city clerk submitting a communication from Asher Heimerman stating his support for the resolution requesting the ethics board to convene for the purpose of conducting an investigation and possible action regarding older person Vicki Meyer. Older person Montemayor. Thank you again, Alderman Boren. Uh, uh, agenda item number two here, we all do know that this was a communication from a child. I, it's nice with civics with, with um, middle school kids, but I just wanted to object to us having something on our agenda that it was from a 14-year-old. Uh, thank you for now. Alder Person Kittleson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can't we just move to file document number 1623 as well? We have a motion and a second to file document number 1623. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Thank you. Next thing on the agenda, item number three, resolution number 1520708, council document number 1643 by Alderperson Gisha, requesting that the Common Council direct the Ethics Board to convene for the purpose of investigating potential wrongdoing or improper behavior in office by Alderperson Vicki Meyer. Alderman Gisha. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Boren. Um, is it appropriate at this time to, uh, as we're meeting as a committee, uh, if anyone additional, we had great discussion about this last Monday evening, uh, a great deal of a discussion. Uh, be appropriate if any additional information that any of the parties involved wish to speak to at this time? Uh, thank you, Alderman Gishy. Yes, it is appropriate. Uh, Alderperson Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this point, I would request that my attorney be allowed to speak for me. Uh, that would be fine. Uh, do we, I think we need a motion to open up the floor to Alderperson Meyer's uh, attorney. All in favor? Chair votes aye. Uh, attorney, if you'd like to step forward to the podium, please. <clears throat> if you could state your name and your firm and your business address for the record, please. Sure. <clears throat> My name is John Raftery, uh, and I'm an attorney <coughs> with the Ritger Law Office, Random Lake, 675 Wolf Road in Random Lake. Um, Mr. Chairman, members of the Council, Ethics Board. 
Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak. Excuse me, attorney, would you pull the microphone up just a little bit, please, so they can hear at home? Uh, normally, I'm a little louder than this. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Alderperson Meyer has asked me <clears throat> uh, to help her with this because uh, if you haven't noticed, this has been uh, uh, a matter of great concern for her. And uh, there's a lot of anxiety about uh, how this may turn out. Um, I've worked with local government officials for 30 years, and I, I think I have uh, uh, observed what approaches seem to work, and uh, I've sure seen a lot of approaches that don't seem to work. But I'd like to tell you that uh, I think that the process that's being used here is not the correct one to address the issue. Ethics Code Section 267 on responsibilities of public officials and employees has a specific list of things that officials must do and a list of things they should do. There's a big difference between must do and should do. Must do is a mandate. Should do is a recommendation. If you must do something, it's an obligation. If you should do it, it's an admirable goal. I should lose weight. I, I don't hear any argument to that. <laughs> the must do's in 267 include, you must uphold the Constitution of the US. You must uphold the Constitution of the state. You must carry out the laws impartially to foster respect of all government. You must observe the highest standards of morality, and you must discharge the duties of your office faithfully, regardless of personal considerations, keeping the public interest as your primary concern. Now, what are the should do's? Conduct your public and private affairs so as to be above reproach in order to foster respect for all government. And I think that's a subsection that you'll be asked to consider in uh, connection with this resolution. Conduct public and private affairs so as to be above reproach. What does that mean? Well, it's not defined in the code. Is it above reproach as measured by the mayor's standards? Above reproach as measured by a citizen's standards? I think each of you may have different definitions of what that means. How much tolerance do you have for differing viewpoints and different ways of saying things. The next should is you should not exceed your authority. Next, you should not breach the law. Next, you should not ask others to exceed their authority or breach the law. And next, you should work with full cooperation with other public officials and employees unless prohibited by law <clears throat> or by confidentiality rules. Now, that's 267. There are a lot of other sections in your ethics code that I think are much clearer. Uh, 268, use of public property. 269, obligations to citizens. 270, conflicts of interest, and so on and so on. Other than 267, which we're discussing here, there's only one other reference <clears throat> in the ethics code to the phrase should. And that's the last part of 273 in which gifts or favors received under unusual circumstances should be referred to a supervisor or to this ethics board for recommended disposition. Um, and I didn't see a definition of what unusual circumstances are. Apparently, that's in the eye of the beholder also. Now, what does it mean to conduct your affairs to be above reproach? or to work in full cooperation with other public officials. As you know in your dealings with other public bodies, it's literally impossible to work in full cooperation at all times with other public officials. But these are shoulds rather than shalls. Well, let's assume for the sake of argument they mean the same. Let's assume just for the sake of this discussion that everything that was charged against Alderperson Meyer would be true right down to the last dramatic detail. This still is not the basis for an ethics code violation. Political disputes 
mudslinging is nothing new. Political disagreements lead to short tempers. They lead to insults. Sometimes the insults are very hurtful. Sometimes they're humorous. Uh, in one of Lincoln's debates with Judge Stephen Douglas in 1858, when Lincoln was running for Congress, Judge Douglas wanted the crowd to see him as uh, educated and cultured and wanted to paint Lincoln as a poor commoner. But Douglas said he wasn't sure how Lincoln's employment at a general store would qualify him to go to Congress, considering that one of Lincoln's principal duties had been to sell glasses of whiskey to customers at the bar. Lincoln's response <clears throat> was that he'd learned a lot <clears throat> about what the people thought from the hours he spent behind the bar, including the many hours listening to Judge Douglas, who was leaning on the other side of it. <laughs> One of the uh, most renowned slingers of political insults, of course, was Winston Churchill. There was a uh, aristocratic woman who felt that Churchill was a traitor to his class by supporting the Labor Party, uh, Lady Astor, Nancy Astor. And at one function, she said to Churchill, sir, if you were my husband, I'd poison your tea. Churchill replied, madam, if I were your husband, I'd drink it. <laughs> and recently, the use of humor by uh, Ronald Reagan in 1984 when he ran for re-election at the age of 73 and qu questions about his age came up. Uh, his opponent, Walter Mondale, was a very young 56. Reagan said during a campaign speech, others have mentioned the age issue. <clears throat> well, I disagree that it's a problem. I'm not going to let my opponent's youth and inexperience become a campaign issue. Now, when you compare the charges against Alderperson person liar to those incidents, it asks, how were those disputes solved? They were all solved at the ballot box. The voters decided which candidate they wanted. And that's the way I think most people in the city of Sheboygan want it done. If you want to be a representative of the people, let the people decide if you're worthy. What is the purpose in perpetuating insults arising from political rivalries? <coughs> I recall when I was a Cub Scout, uh, the Cub Scout packs had uh, a summer baseball league. I played on a team that happened to beat another team with uh, a couple of acquaintances of mine, and one of the kids on the losing team came up and said, well, you may have won the game, but you're fat. That happened about 55 years ago. I'm still fat, but I still remember that comment. Insults hurt, insults stay with you. Insults divert you from the public's business. How many hours collectively <clears throat> have you spent as public officials thinking about this problem, talking to others about this issue, trying to decide how you're going to handle it? Later tonight, when you convene as a council, I understand you're going to be addressing the city's budget. How difficult is it when you address that budget to look at which areas could be trimmed, which programs that you've rejected should really be added if you had the money for it? The budget is the greatest policy document this council deals with each year. How you spend the taxpayer's money tells the taxpayers what your political policies are. Have you been diverted from a thorough study of the budget and other important items of city business because of this? So how do we get people away from personal attacks? How to get people to focus on debating ideas rather than attacking people? Can you respect the person you disagree with even if you don't like his ideas? Sure you can. It's not easy. You might be able to persuade him to change his view if you use diplomacy. 
and approach him privately. And I'd remind you that this incident started with a private conversation that was not intended to publicly embarrass anybody. When you challenge somebody's position in public, you just are on the battle lines. The only effective way is to present your reasons for an action calmly, truthfully, without emotional overtones, and without attacks against individuals or groups. Perhaps one way to do that would be a code of courtesy. I don't think the code of ethics applies to this particular problem, but if you adopted a code of courtesy, you would have some guidance on what is and what is not acceptable behavior. If you want to give that some thought, I've prepared a very short draft for your consideration. I'd like to pass it out at this time. I can tell you in trying to develop uh, this as a starting point for your consideration, there are very few local governmental bodies that have a code of courtesy. I think you will have the same problems in interpreting and enforcing a code of courtesy that you do with Section 267. Does it apply to specific situations? Has a person conducted themselves uh, in their public and private affairs above reproach. What is courtesy? What is politeness? What is respect? If you want to pursue this, uh, you can polish this up the, the way that you'd like it and introduce it to the council through the usual channels. Whatever route you take, I respectfully submit to you that the charges against Alder Person Meyer simply do not fit within the code of ethics, which is what she's being charged with. If you're not pleased with what she said to Alder Person Ryan, please keep in mind that it was said in private, and it was not Alder Person Meyer who decided to go public with it. I have six young grandchildren, and some aspects of this remind me of one of them running to her mommy complaining that her brother said a bad word. Now, what's the purpose of saying that? To get the brother in trouble. Well, how does that help my granddaughter? What's accomplished by that? Nothing. Nothing positive is accomplished by personal attacks. I think that's a classic example of childish behavior. That's where emotions have overtaken reason because of political rivalries or past slights. If you consider this as a violation of the ethics code, be prepared for a flood of complaints from people who feel that some city official treated them disrespectfully and should come before this ethics board. That's not what the ethics code was designed to do. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Attorney Rafferty, and uh, thank you, uh, uh, Alder Person Meyer. I have a number of lights flashing here. I believe first is President Hanna. Oh, thank you. Thank you, all the person board. A uh, couple things. I just need clarification under that code 267. High standards of morality, did that fall under the shallow or the mandated behavior? And secondly, uh, we as a council already have a general rule of conduct provided by um, Mayor Perez on reference page six. It says all the persons, committee, commissioners, board members shall conduct themselves in highly professional and respectful manners when representing the city. In answer to your first question, Attorney McLean, would you want to comment on that, please? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I don't have a copy of the uh, code right handy. I think I've got one with me, but they haven't found it yet. <clears throat> Uh, the language in 2-267 yes. that says... There's mandated language and there's recommended language, according to uh, Councilor Rafferty. Uh, I don't know. 
I guess my opinion is the same as it was at the, at the council meeting, and I think I expressed it. Maybe it wasn't as clear as possible, but I guess I would agree with Attorney Raftery from the standpoint that the, uh, the prohibitions are really the, the subsequent sections. The, uh, this is sort of an aspirational provision, that, in my view, 2-267. I was asking, he had made reference to high standards of morality. Do they fall under the mandate or uh, the recommendation? They're bound to observe in their official acts the highest standards of morality. Uh, uh, it it's falls under the same, it's really a, okay. a mandate. Uh, they're bound to uphold the Constitution of the United States as well. Thank you. Uh, so I guess the, the highest standards of morality is a, I guess it's rather subjective as to what some of these morals is. I but understand. The, the, the main thrust of the ethics code uh, is not, you know, ethical conduct in general. It, it's personal and financial interests in your affairs as, as an alderman, as a department head, as any city official. Mm -hmm. And uh, the do's and don'ts are really set forth in the other specific sections. Uh, you can't use city property for personal gain and that sort of thing. Did you want to follow up, President Hanna? Thank you. Yes, I just, uh, and I, I think all of us have thought long and hard about the situation for tonight. And I would just, I would like to uh, really pose a question to my, my fellow older people. And I'd ask this question. Is the conduct complained of such that we would want to condone or condemn it regardless of political alignments? Ethical lapses should be judged objectively as possible as opposed to subjectively. Ethical lapses should be judged without consideration of public sentiment. Ethics have more timeless of an element. Whether a specific act is ethical or not needs to be judged by a timeless standard. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Uh, the next light I have flashing here is Alderman Bulk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, a lot of this depends on, a lot of what we do tonight will depend on whether we believe uh, the story that is out there about what happened out in that hallway. Uh, and, and we have only the public record to go on. Uh, and so if you believe what happened, if you believe the public reports, there have been several opportunities for both parties to explain their side of the story. There were newspaper <clears throat> reports at the beginning of this. I had personal conversations with both of them uh, before uh, it grew to this level, and that led me to, to write my letter to, our, to the council. Uh, and then there were more newspaper articles. There were proceedings last Monday night for this story to get out there. And in all of that, I have heard nothing from the older person from the 7th District to indicate that there's been some sort of misunderstanding. I'm not convinced that the older person from the 7th District has even acknowledged that if you believe what happened, and we have no reason not to believe it because there's been no refuting of it, if you are to believe that, then the only conclusion you can draw is that there was a threat made to reveal private family information in order to manipulate future political outcomes. And I can't imagine anything more against the highest standards of morality, to quote the counselor's reference of section 2267, they are bound to observe in their official acts the highest standards of morality and discharge faithfully the duties of their office, regardless of personal considerations. You can talk about the word should, you can talk about the word shall. It says they are bound to observe in their official acts the highest uh, highest standards. So again, the good presentation made by the counselor, you can't invoke immunity by just saying it was a private conversation. That doesn't get you anything. That doesn't get you points. That doesn't get you immunity just because you say it was private. There's nothing private about that conversation. Um, and it wasn't an attack or an insult. I love the Ronald Reagan quote. I love all the counselor's quotes. I, um, but that wasn't what happened in the hall. If you believe, if we are to believe that that's what happened, and we have no reason not to believe it because there have been several opportunities for it to be refuted, and it wasn't. So if you believe that that's what happened in the hall, 
then it wasn't an attack or an insult. It was a threat. It was a threat to manipulate future political outcomes by revealing private family information. And, um, and, and why that's important, and the counselor invoked that too, I wish we hadn't spent the last two weeks, counselor, spending all this time on this silly matter. Not that it's a silly matter, it's a very grave matter. I wish we hadn't spent all this time for the past two weeks dealing with this because we have had the budget on our mind. And I, I know everybody in this room has put all their effort into the budget and has been an additional burden of this matter. I wish it hadn't. But when something of this grave magnitude comes before us, we can't dismiss it because it puts in jeopardy what everybody believes we are using, the rationale that we're using, to decide the other official business. If, if we tolerate this kind of behavior, if we believe what happened in the hallway, and we have no reason not to believe it because there's been no refuting of it, if we tolerate that behavior amongst this body, then, then that puts every judgment we make, ambulance and fire service, budgets, early retirements, it puts all that into question because why are you doing it? Are you doing it because you're afraid personal information is going to come out? Or are you doing it because the numbers say what you believe the numbers say? So I guess I'll close by asking one more time for the older person from the seventh district to take the opportunity to stand before her peers and acknowledge either what happened happened and explain to us why that's wrong. I would just like to hear her articulate why that is potentially unethical. Why are we here? Uh, and if she can't do that or won't do that, then that makes it hard for me not to think that we need to deal with this with, with, with strong measures because I'm not convinced. If that doesn't happen, I won't be convinced that she believes she did anything wrong. And that, for me, would be a hard thing to swallow. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Alderman Balk. My next light flashing is Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Chairman Boren, um, very much. This is a, a, a sad evening um, for everybody. I feel uh, uh, a lot of sadness for uh, Alderperson Meyer and for the rest of the council in the city. We do have pressing business to move on to, and I hope we can after this evening. Um, in, lawyers are interesting animals. Uh, they, they're an awful lot like magicians. They try to say, look over here, while they're doing something over here. And, uh, and I understand that, and that's the way the system works. Um, splitting hairs under the definition of must and should is like splitting hairs over the definition of the word is and what that means uh, by diverting the issue. Please don't be diverted by the issue. Uh, wonderful quotes and interesting little quips, uh, political mumbo jumbo from over the years that are wonderfully entertaining. However, it trivializes the issue we're dealing with here. If Lincoln had stood up in that, in that debate and said, I got dirt on the other guy, uh, uh, and if uh, Lincoln doesn't shut his mouth, I'm going to bring up that, we wouldn't be, he wouldn't be quoting that, that handy little uh, exchange. Um, political insults are one thing. This was not a political insult. This was a personal attack and, in my view, a, uh, a threatening attack. Um, a, a diversion, yes, it's exactly what this is. But this body didn't start the diversion, so please do not put the burden of the process we're going through at the fault of this body. We didn't do it. We didn't start it. We didn't say it. We are dealing with it. I do not fault Alderman Ryan for going to the media. That seemed to be another attempt uh, by the statement to, uh, to try to stop Alderman Ryan from, uh, that was bad that he went to the media. I don't blame him for doing that. I don't blame him for doing that. If it was just a political quip argument, as Attorney Raftery was talking about, then I would fault him for going to the media for that, because it was just normal political discourse. This rises above normal political discourse. Keep the public's interest as your primary concern. That was the quote for the spokesperson for Alderperson Meyer. If this isn't that, which is also contained in 267, I don't know what is. Yes, it's a diversion. Uh, I appreciate the, uh, the code of courtesy. I think it's a very interesting document. But I don't need a code of courtesy to tell me not to threaten another alderman <laughs> about bringing up their personal and family lives. I, I, I appreciate it. It would be a, a wonderful thing to look at. But, but some things are common sense. And, and maybe if I can go back now to City Attorney McLean, our, a question for you. Um, by everything that's said in your statements, is this board fully within its authority to take action this evening uh, 
and, and make recommendations this evening under the code of ethics we have? Yes or no? Um, not to take any action, but to make recommendations to the council. We're fully within our authority under the statute. I believe so. Okay. Um, with that, I would move to uh, file resolution number 1520708 and move to pass the following and ask the council to pass the following. I move to pass uh, a censure of Alderman Meyer, Alderperson Meyer and ask for the removal of Alderperson Meyer as chairman of the Committee of the Whole. Second. For the interest of the city, so we can move on. We have a motion uh, to, and a second to censor uh, Alderperson Meyer and take away her uh, committee uh, chairmanship of the Committee of the Whole. Uh, is there any discussion on that? Is there any discussion on the motion? I have some lights flashing that are not on the motion. Uh, first, I'll take discussion on the motion. Chairman, if I could follow up. Uh, Go ahead, Alderman Gisher. I'm sorry. That was a little improper. I, to explain that action, um, if you believe a, uh, a censure is an order which is no punitive action on a censure, on a censure um, Alderperson Meyer would be replaced back as chairman of the Committee of the Whole, which then would make Alderperson Meyer the chairman of the Ethics Board. And I think uh, that would be incompatible with each other if you feel a, uh, uh, if you're of a mind that a censure is appropriate. So um, the two do tie together um, and, um, and do make sense from a public interest standpoint and and from a uh, common sense standpoint, uh, they make sense to me together, and that's why they are tied. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Gisha. Uh, discussion on the motion only. Uh, Alderman Rinfleisch, were you on the motion only? Yes. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it seems to be the motion is something similar that we asked for already on last week, Monday, uh, a censure. It seems like we've already been beyond this, so I have no opposition to the motion itself, except for the fact that the technicalities, we were not able to actually hear both sides of the story under oath of what did happen. Uh, we're making some big judgments on saying this is a personal attack. I wasn't there. I didn't hear. I've only heard one side of the story. It wasn't under oath. I believe it happened, um, and I believe the behavior was inappropriate. But we're going to be taking a stand here to remove someone from a, from a chairmanship without being able to hear the stories both under oath. Uh, so if we, the motion continues, I, I will vote with the, with the motion, but I urge you to perhaps wait again, if I, and we all want to be beyond this, that we can do this properly if we're going to take that, that kind of stand that all the I's are dotted, T's are crossed, and both parties are, are able to be heard in front of the whole committee uh, under oath. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Rinfleisch. Uh, any discussion on the motion only? Alderman Manning. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> to vote censure is to open a Pandora's box. It's an extremely vague area and category. We are called to uphold the highest standards. It's highly subjective. If we open this door and go this avenue, we potentially tie up hundreds of our hours in the future with business that's an aside to the city's real business. It was a sad moment in personal relationship. But that's, I think, where it ends. I think the attorney was correct. Any censure that should come, comes at the ballot box. And I believe the older person has already had a greater censure by virtue of the public exposure and discussion than any censure that we could thus give, if that was our pleasure. I think it's a waste of time and energy. I think we need to move ahead with the business of the city there have been two basic responses in the city as I have spoken with people. The first is outcry and outrage. And the other is dismissive. It sounds to folks as if we're adolescents and being caught up in personal innuendo. I don't know where each of us falls on that spectrum. 
but I think it's interesting to note those two responses in the life of our city. It's a no with the censor. The censor has effectively already been, been made publicly. Let's move ahead, please. Vote down this motion. Thank you, Alderman uh, Manny. Uh, point of order, uh, Attorney McLean, should I be taking the vote on the motion or can I continue with the lights that are flashing before I take the vote on the motion? Um, it's up to the chair, but I would say if somebody wants to speak to the motion, uh, you should probably honor that request. I have, I have three lights flashing. Uh, first of all is Alderman Ryan. Did you want to speak on the motion, Alderman Ryan, or did you have some other comment? Yes, I'd like to speak on the motion, and I'd like to expound upon it. point of order. If he's abstaining, he shouldn't be allowed to speak on the motion. I don't believe I'm uh, uh, obligated to abstain. Uh, Attorney McLean, your opinion on whether Alderman Ryan should abstain? Uh, it's a tough call, and it's a personal call. Uh, I uh, prepared a letter to the to the mayor in response to his questions about about this, and I said on the fly. I used my judgment at the last meeting, and uh, when there was a motion to censure uh, Alder Person Meyer, uh, I didn't feel that. Alder and Ryan had a personal or financial interest in whether or not the council as a body uh, censured Alderman Meyer any different than any other alderman uh, as, a, as an alderman. Uh, if you look at, again, the ethics code as far as personal and financial interest, uh, if Alder person Ryan was to gain something, and I, and I think this comes down to a personal judgment on Alderman Ryan's part. Uh, he is accountable for voting or not voting or abstaining or not abstaining. But uh, the ethics code speaks in terms of if there's a personal conflict, uh, personal interest or financial interest. Uh, certainly I can see a certain amount of personal interest from a you know, retribution type of standpoint, but uh, that would be uh, more uh, related to if Alder Person Meyer, uh, excuse me, Alder Person Ryan was getting something out of the vote, personally or financially, which I don't believe he would be any more than any other Alder Persons. Um, and I did give the opinion previously that Alder Person Meyer, I think, should abstain in that she does have a personal interest in this. Uh, in that the, uh, the allegations being made against her and the, uh, the action is being uh, proposed against her. Uh, but I, I do think it's, it's a close case as to whether older person Ryan should abstain or not. I, I think he's going to have to use his conscience on that. Uh, as I say, the opinion I provided at the council meeting Monday night, I, I think I, I have the same opinion. I'm, somewhat uh, uh, torn by whether or not indeed uh, all the person Ryan has a personal or financial interest in the outcome of the action any more or less than any other alder person. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Uh, Alderman Ryan, I'll, I'll uh, recognize you. Uh, I do not want a rehash of what you said the other night. I want you to keep uh, your comments germane to tonight's discussion, so go ahead. Very good, sir. I appreciate it. Um, first of all, I I can, in, in with a clear conscience, vote on this for a reason. That's because I've already lost. I have nothing to gain. I don't want to be here tonight doing this. I'd rather be at home. Um, I have nothing to gain here. I had nothing to gain from the start. I had nothing to gain from being out in the hallway, and I'll leave that at that. Um, as far as tonight's vote goes, uh, basically, I think this is an issue of ethics. You know, ethics is morality. Um, dictionary definition of morality is the rightness or wrongness of something. Is what was done right or wrong? And that's basically the question that faces the council. Was it ethical? Was it not ethical? 
It is subjective. Uh, it's a matter of conscience for people. Was it right? Was it wrong? That's, that's basically what it's all about. Um, one thing I can say, I want to put this behind us as a council. We owe it to the citizens. I didn't want this to happen in the first place. I can't believe it did. One thing I can promise is that when this is over, um, I have scheduled some meetings with different mayors of different municipalities to go over their code of ethics. And how can they run a clean local government without constantly being in the newspapers looking like a bunch of bozos? And point of I, order, point of order. Bozo. Okay, I will take care. Looking like, looking less than professional. One thing I do promise is that when this is over, regardless of the outcome, and I do want it to be over tonight, um, I will do my best, hopefully with the help of older persons on this council, that have an idea in their mind of what ethics means, that we will have a true code of ethics in this city. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Uh, Alderman Vanderbilt, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to say that, assuming she said what has been said, as she said. I, I believe it was wrong, assuming that's what happened, but I feel uncomfortable censuring somebody without more of a formal hearing, without a testimony, without it being under oath. So I will vote accordingly. Thank you, Alderman Vanderwilly. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Chairman. The code book specifically warns us to stay out of this sort of hallway harangue. I think Attorney Beesing made it clear. I think Attorney McLean made it clear. I think Attorney Raftery made it clear. This does not fall in the ethics code book that we're talking about. And the public humiliation that Alderman Meyer went to last week certainly is plenty of punishment to last for a long time. That's not what I would have hoped from us as a council, as an ethics board. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Are there any other uh, aldermen that want to be heard before I call for the vote? Alderman Wangaman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Not to get off the point here, the point has been made that an attempt was made through a veiled threat or a direct threat to influence a vote or to influence future outcome of voting. This is the issue, not whether bad or good things were said about someone, not even did somebody lie. I uh, thank Alderman Montemayor for continually giving us legal updates, but I too have a big book at home, just like you have, and I've read it. Okay, so, but thank you anyway. And uh, keep in mind, this is what we're talking about. Was a threat made? I have seen nothing to refute that. What was the purpose of that threat? This is what we have to look at and put aside all the other stuff, all the smoke and mirrors that have been put before us, but a threat was made, and this is a serious thing. And as Alderman Gish has said, this is a sad night. Yeah, it's a very sad night. I'm pretty familiar with Sheboygan history, and I can't find anything like it that I've ever seen in the past even in my lifetime and before. So this council should hang their heads in sadness tonight because this is a sad night. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Wangerman. Uh, Alderman Balk, did you press your button again? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a procedural question, and then I'd like to follow up with a comment. Uh, for Attorney McLean, can you re-explain what is it that prevents us from, if, if either party wanted to go under oath tonight, what prevents us from that, if anything? Uh, number one, it's not on the agenda. Number two, the, the and I guess with my apologies to Alderberth and Gisha, if uh, misconstrued our conversation, the the document that was referred to this board uh, was not acted on by the council, and the the document called for 
the, the resolution called for uh, the council directing the ethics board to convene and investigate. Uh, that wasn't adopted by the council, it was merely referred. So to, to start conducting an investigation under oath at this point, I think, is a, a due process issue where the parties haven't really been properly notified that they're even being investigated. And uh, all that this document was doing was being referred to this body for a recommendation back to the council as to whether to direct the ethics board to conduct the hearing. So, you know, had the council passed resolution uh, 152.0708 last Monday night, then I'd say you'd be in a, in a hearing mode tonight, uh, assuming there would have been ample time to provide due process opportunity to be heard and so forth. But, okay. Well then, given that, there's no question about uh, notification. Everybody in town knew that this piece was going to be talked about tonight. Um, and given the fact that uh, Alderman Meyer has an attorney present, is there any way that we could choose, if she wants to, is there any way that we can choose to give her the opportunity to speak? Is there anything we can do tonight to give her the chance to be heard? Uh, you can ask her. You know, if, if you want to compel her to testify, I, I would say no. Okay, uh, then, then I still have some comments I want to make after, but I, I would just postulate the question or pose the question to us as a body. Do we want to grant ourselves, grant our peer the opportunity to, to speak her piece? Sort of Thank you, Alderman Balk. Uh, I did extend that. I did uh, extend that uh, opportunity earlier for either Alderman, uh, Alderperson Meyer to be heard or her counsel, and she chose her counsel at this time, uh, and that was my understanding. Uh, and when she when she rose, she said, "I want my counsel to do my talking tonight." So that's what happened. Did you have a couple further comments, Alderman? Yes, Bob? sir. Thank you. Just for a second, then. Then I don't see how we can. We, we've given. Alder Person Meyer, every reasonable opportunity to disabuse us of the notion we have that w of what happened out in that hall. And, and her and her counselor are not going to do that. And so given that, um, it's a shame. Uh, we, we shouldn't allow her counselor to trivialize by invoking his grandchildren mm -hmm. to trivialize what we do here. And we shouldn't. Uh, I, I know that uh, if you read the blogs or if you read whatever you're reading out there, there are people, as, as Alderman Manny referred to, there are people that think this is trivial, and I just couldn't disagree more. You have 16 people who have spent a lot of time thinking about this. We aren't acting on this quickly. We aren't acting on this uh, of hot temper. They're, we're not acting on this emotionally. We're acting on this out of a sad, sad notion that the way we want to behave was violated. Uh, something we believe in was violated. And so when children tattletale on each other, that may or may not have consequences. And unfortunately, the alderman, alder person from the 7th district has undergone, and so has the alder person from the 4th district. An unfortunate public hearing, but that's, that's not what we as a body do. We as a body put things in law, and, and, and we have to react. It's a little disappointing. I know that uh, uh, Alderman Manny's a man of God and also a man of, of counsel. You know, he counsels people secularly, uh, I suppose. And, and he, I would think that he knows that actions have consequences. So I would, I would ask just a couple more questions. One is, if a business peer said this to us at work, we work for the same boss. Boy, you wouldn't want our boss finding out about what I know about you and your wife, would you? Would we think that was an ethical way to act at work? If Someone in our volunteer or our church life came up to us and said, you don't want the priest to know what I know about you, do you? Or you don't want the church trustees to know, do you? Would we think that was ethical behavior? Or an applicant of a liquor license. If an applicant for a liquor license came up to an alderman and said, I better get my liquor license because guess what? I know some stuff about you. Would we think that was ethical behavior? I just, it's a, it's a sad, sad night. And what I think may be most sad about it is that some people think it's trivial. And that's, that's the most important part for me. Thank you for your 
your time. Thank you, Alderman Balk. I have uh, time for one more, and that is Alderman Rindfleisch. Thank you, Chairman. I guess follow up on what we're, we're hearing today. The initial intent was to call this ethics board to investigate. Um, I watch a lot of CSI and crime shows. Uh, an investigation to me is go get the information. Uh, look under every rock, uh, every aspect we can. Are we taking this role seriously to investigate? Right now, I don't see that we are. We've heard stories. We have not heard both sides of the story. Yes, she had the opportunity. She did not do so. But we have not actually put anybody under oath. We are here, uh, you know, what we hear is based on what my constituents tell me on the telephone what happened, what the press said happened. Uh, I don't know what happened, and we haven't done anything to investigate that yet. Uh, so I'd urge you that, that we can, I would have loved to have been done with this last week. I spoke pretty loudly about that, so, so that we can move forward. But trivialization to me seems as if what we're doing right now, that we're going to jump and move quickly just to get past it now. We've started the process. We might as well finish it and go be thorough all the way through. Otherwise, to me, it seems like we're going to be sweeping something under the carpet and moving on quickly, just for the sake of moving on quickly. I would have loved been done. We're not. So let's go all the way, go back into council, have council direct ourselves to investigate, pass that resolution so that this body is enacted to put people under oath, to investigate it, and we'll get the answers. Then we know it happened. We all know the attack happened on the hallway, but I wasn't to see it with my own eyes. I don't know what was said exactly on both parties. We can find out then we can truly see what kind of punishment, if any, is required. So I urge you, you know, I, I want to move this forward, but I'm also going to, going to now vote against this motion. And instead, I urge you to support a motion that we do go back, we go into council, and we do authorize this committee to do a thorough, full investigation now. Thank you. Alderman Rinfleisch, the council will have that opportunity on Monday night. Uh, this, this resolution that either is passed or not passed will go back to the council. It will be up to the council on Monday night whether they want to move forward with the, with the ethics board further to do what you're, you're asking. Alderman Manny, I can give you just a minute or two, and then That's we have, we have to move you. on. <laughs> to note how slippery the slope is, if we pass this censure this evening, then and if Alderperson Ryan votes and votes to censure, there may be 60% of us who find that unethical and a breach of clear conscience in pursuing the public good, we could then bring Alderperson Ryan into question. We don't want to do that. It's a slippery slope. Therefore, uh, I would recommend to Alderperson Ryan that you abstain. <sighs> Alderman Bauch, very quickly. Very quickly. I and the, the, the power of a deliberative body is that if 60% of the people think that the, of the members think that that rises to that level and are compelled by their moral, their, their morality to do that, then it would be absolutely incumbent upon this body to entertain that. And it is a slippery slope, but it is the, 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 the thinking that it would take 60% of the people to actually think that thought. And if they do, then they're compelled to do it. And, and I think tonight, uh, a majority is going to feel compelled to act on the fact that we just have no reason to not believe that that didn't occur because the, the, the member, unfortunately, has had every... And, and just to, to address what Alderman Reinfleisch mentioned, it, for me, it's not speculation. It's not newspaper reports. I spoke to Alderman uh, Meyer after it happened. We had a long 20-minute or so conversation, and, and I asked her to help me realize why what was going on in public was wrong. And, and she was not able to do that. So for me, it's not about speculation. It's about a one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know what, who in this body <coughs> has spent time actually talking to Alderman Ryan and talking to Alderman Meyer, but I have. So I can cast my vote with a very clear conscience tonight. Thank you, sir. OK, I'm going uh, to I'm gonna uh, call the question because we're running up against the deadline here. I wish we had another 20 minutes, but we don't. We have a, another meeting scheduled at 7 o'clock. So I'm going to call the question and ask, uh, turn off these lights. Uh, and ask Madam City Clerk to uh, call the roll on the motion. And would you please restate the motion before the council members vote, please? Sure. There's a motion on the floor by Alderman Gisha, second by Alderman Belk, to recommend to the council to file Res 152 0708, which is on your agenda, and to submit a document to council to censure Alderman Meyer and to remove her as chairperson of the Committee of the Whole. And I vote would be to do that. Does everybody understand the motion? Alderperson Kittleson, you need clarification? Yes, I 
I do, and that means that that goes to council for voting on at that time. Yes, this is a recommendation to council to draft a document to censure that would state to censure Alderman Meyer and to remove her as chairperson of the committee of the whole. That would come into council on the 3rd of December. And this would be a recommendation to also file the current existing resolution. Would you like me to go ahead? Go ahead and call the roll. Thank you. An aye vote would be what we said. Uh, Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunis? No. Manny? No. Meyer? Stain. Montemayor? No. Rinfleisch? No. Excuse me? No. Thank you. Ryan? Abstain. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Wangaman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. The vote is eight ayes, five noes, and two abstentions. Motion carries. Motion to adjourn. Second. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Uh -huh.